Hello, my name is Cameron Arshadi. Um, I'm a data analyst at the Allen Institute for Neural Dynamics, uh, working on the data transfer pipeline for the XSBIM platform. Okay. Um, so just to give some motivation for what we'll be talking about today, um, after acquisition, the raw data is stored on a local flash storage system with a one petabyte capacity. Um, and since each data set can be up to hundreds of terabytes, we need to be able to move the data out of the building and into cloud storage as quickly as possible. This is especially true since we'll be imaging multiple brains per week. So it is super important to have a data transfer pipeline that can keep up with the rate of acquisition. We also need to be able to compress the data to reduce the transfer time over the network and save on cloud storage costs. And this pipeline is still in active development and currently uses a combination of on-premises and cloud-based resources. So first, the raw Amaris data sets um, are read from the local VAST storage server into the Allen Institute HPC cluster, where the data is compressed and written to a public S3 bucket in OMEs R format. Um, and once the data is in cloud storage, the raw image tiles are stitched into a coherent volume. And this process consists of a tile alignment step which estimates a registration by matching features and overlapping regions between adjacent tiles, and then a fusion step, which applies these transformations to each tile to shift them into their correct position, and then renders these aligned images as a single volume. The tile alignment step is run um, in a single virtual machine on the CodeOcean platform using Big Stitcher, and the fusion step is currently run on the on-premises compute cluster and uses Big Stitcher Spark to distribute the work across multiple compute nodes. But in the final pipeline, the fusion step will also run fully in the cloud. So once the data is fused, we can start visualizing and annotating the data with cloud-based tools such as uh, NeuroGlancer and Horta Cloud. So this is just a quick overview of the pipeline. Uh, and before we get into the details for each of these steps, I just want to give a quick justification for why we chose OMIZAR as the target file format. And so why do we choose OMIZAR? Well, uh, to enable open access to our imaging data, we want to store all of our data in cloud storage providers such as AWS S3 and Google Cloud Storage. Uh, this means choosing a file format that can be read from and written to the cloud in parallel. Uh, so on local storage, we store image data in the Amaris format, which is designed to store multiple channels, time points, and resolution levels in a single file. Um, enabling high performance visualization of very large images on a personal workstation. But the drawback of this format is that it is proprietary and is designed around the commercial MR software suite. Since open science is critical to our mission at AIND, we wanted to standardize around a format that is open source and integrated with other open source tools in the scientific software ecosystem. And the OMIZAR format has several advantages in this respect. It is open source and has a large contributor and user base. Each data chunk is stored in a separate file, whereas in Amaris, all chunks are stored in a single file. This enables parallel read-write access to the data and improves performance in cloud environments. Both formats offer chunk-level compression during writing, although ZAR has a larger selection of codecs and more flexibility in adding user-defined compression and filtering pipelines. And since our data sets are so large, compressing the data before transferring it over the network can greatly improve throughput. Both formats also natively support multi-resolution pyramids, which is critical for visualizing and interacting with uh, terabyte scale images. So let's dig into the cloud transfer pipeline a bit more. After acquisition, a data set is moved to an SSD storage server with a one petabyte capacity. This is a temporary buffer used to store data sets for initial visualization and quality control while they are queued for processing by the on-premises HPC. The HPC cluster is used to compress the data, convert it to OMIZAR, and transfer it to cloud storage. Each image tile is read into HPC memory as a DASC array, which allows us to manipulate larger than memory arrays in a lazy fashion. The array is rechunked with a larger block size, which reduces the total number of files transferred over the network, um, and also saves on cloud storage costs. Since each get and put HTTP request is charged, each chunk is then compressed with the BLOSS compressor using the Z standard codec with byte shuffle, which leads to a 5 to 7x lossless compression ratio. Compressed chunks are written in parallel to an OMIZAR container in a cloud storage bucket. The overall throughput of this pipeline can reach over 2 gigabytes per second, meaning that a 100 terabyte dataset 
can be transferred from local storage to the cloud in compressed star format in under 13 hours. This allows us to keep up with the rate of imaging and prevents the vast storage buffer from becoming full. So in developing this pipeline, uh, various codecs from the BLOSC library were compared to assess compression ratio and write speed. Um, and in this test, we randomly extracted subvolumes from exospin tiles and did an exhaustive search over the compression parameter configurations using the numcodex Python library, which is natively integrated with the Python implementation of ZAR. It was found that the Z standard codec with byte shuffle yielded the best balance between compression and speed. Uh, therefore, we use this codec as the default for all exospin datasets. We also explored the effect of chunk size on write speed. It was found that larger chunks up to a certain point improve write speed to AWS S3 from on-premises compute. And an important consideration when selecting a chunk size is the performance and downstream analysis and visualization tools. Chunks that are too large will lead to unnecessary memory usage and download time when reading small regions of interest. But chunks that are too small will slow down network transfer and also increase cloud storage costs. So we use 32 megabyte chunks before compression, which provides a good balance between transfer time and visualization performance in the cloud. So once the raw data is in the cloud in OME ZAR format, the individual image tiles are stitched into a coherent volume using Big Stitcher. The stitching pipeline is um, in active development and currently uses a combination of on-premises and cloud-based resources. The registration step runs on a CodeOcean virtual machine and consists of three steps. First, an initial alignment is created using the nominal stage coordinates from the microscope. Next, interest points are detected in regions of overlap between tiles, and these interest points uh, correspond to bright or dark features in the image such as blobs or nuclei. Next, these interest points are used to find correspondences between tiles, and the estimate of a registration is iteratively updated until a globally optimal solution is found. Um, and the end result of this process is an XML file, which describes the transformations necessary to map each individual tile onto its place in the stitched volume. Um, and this XML is used as input to Big Stitcher Spark, which applies these transformations to the raw data to generate a single coherent 3D volume. And this step currently runs on the Allen Institute HPC, but we are working on modifying the Big Stitcher code base so that it can run in the cloud. Um, and the output of this fusion is an N5 data set, which we progressively downsample to generate a multi-scale pyramid. And then we convert this N5 to OMI ZAR and upload it to our S3 bucket for long-term storage and subsequent processing. So once the stitch volume is in the cloud, we can begin visualizing and annotating the data. To do this, we use several cloud-based tools NeuroGlancer is a web-based viewer for volumetric data. Um, it, it displays a 2D view with arbitrary slicing, which is useful for visualizing data sets um, right as they come off the microscope for initial inspection and quality control. Um, and we, we also use it to visualize stitching transformations on the fly without having to render out the full fused data. Uh, NeuroGlancer is also useful for viewing segmentation overlays on the raw data as well as skeletons and brain meshes. Uh, and for annotation, we use a program called Horta Cloud, which is a browser-based application for high-performance 3D visualization of terabyte scale images. Uh, Horta Cloud provides a fast volume rendering of pyramidal images, which allows seamless interaction with the data at all zoom levels. It was also built for collaborative neuron annotation workflows and supports proof editing of pre-generated segmentations. We use this software to trace the complete axonal arbors of single projection neurons with the goal of understanding how different regions of the brain are wired together. And so the output of this process are skeletons, uh, which capture the complete axonal and dendritic morphology of a neuron, which can be used to analyze the overall structure as well as the projection targets for each cell. Uh, and with that, I will hand it over to Anna Grimm We'll discuss the uh, neuron segmentation pipeline. Thanks.